time is 2,500 years ago. The place is Persia. The man is Assyrius, king of the Medes and the Persians, ruler of 127 provinces, the most powerful man on earth. The army is the conqueror of all the lands from India to Ethiopia. They are returning home now from fresh victories in Egypt. marches to Shushan. Shall I send a messenger to herald my king's arrival? Perhaps not. It would give this loyalty time to put on its mask. However, I already know someone who wears the mask. Send your messenger. Be married before I go to Shushan. A gift for the bride, and may the gods make her fertile. May my God bless you, sir. Egyptians and leaves his army here to fight his people. Does the hunting lion know what the cubs are doing while he's away? The lion is the evil one. If we could only go to our real home in Judah. The king of Persia rules Judah too. 
You call Judah your homeland, yet you've never even seen it. We were born in Persia. Our home is where we live. We worship our own God. But Assyrus is our king. You must admit he's generous. This is his gift for you. So he's bought your devotion with gifts. This beautiful thing, while our people are starving and men hang, he gives you this from his bloodstained hands. I dreamed of the day that you would return, but the dream wasn't like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The king approaches with his army. The king's messenger. Open the gate. Not even in sight yet. Time is still with us. No, Haman. Your time has ended. <laughs> My time? Our time, if that saves your pride. <laughs> you know, you might be throwing away the next king of Persia. I'm well aware of your ambition, Haman. Then why be so final, my dear? <laughs> Osiris has no eyes in the back of his head. And a secret alliance with me would be quite useful to you. As well as to your own future, my dear Vashti. Well, no one can say that the king's chief minister did not serve him well during his absence, both politically and domestically. I trust you, Prince Haman. If I fall, you will lose your head, too. Ah, but what of your other lovers? My queen's diversions have caused much gossip. But who will stand forth to testify? Their bloody heads would hang from the royal gate. No. When I enfold the king in my arms again, then whom will he believe? Mm? I agree, Vashti. The goddess of nature was especially generous to you. And the royal purple is most becoming. So wear it while you may. Queens, come and go. Do your ambitions stem from the dream that uh, Eastern Potion brings to you, my dear Haman? <laughs> Take care it does not loosen your tongue. <laughs> of Assyria and Babylon and Egypt, conqueror of Scythia Asia and all the lands across the sea. Your last statement is false. I have not been able to conquer Greece. I thought it only a matter of time, my lord. Enough, enough. 
Save that eulogy for my tomb. I shall do so, sire. So you plan to outlive me? My master knows I would give my life for him. I wonder. And you, my General Phaedrates, what is the condition of your army which remained in Persia? Splendid, master. Splendid. Where is uh, Lord Mordecai? Sire, he is the one counselor whose cooperation I have not had. It appears he pays reverence to no one but his invisible Hebrew God. Mordecai. Welcome, sir. Welcome back to Shushan. I see my king as well. Not even a slight wound? No, Mordecai, not even a scratch. Thanks to your friend Simon, who saved me from being ridden down and speared like a wild animal. I am rewarding him with honors. My strong Simon. I too am rewarding him by giving him my niece in marriage. You are a man of warmth, Mordecai. That is why we're surprised to note your absence at my welcoming. I thought it better to pray for my king's safe homecoming than to hail him. This unseen god of yours is strange to me, but he does seem to get things done. His works are sure, and I have faith that you will be his instrument for stopping the cruelties of Prince Haman. I shall examine the administration of Haman. I have no fondness for the man, but he is a politic necessity. Efficient, though overzealous. But let us speak of something more cheerful. Queen Vashti. I trust she has not pined for me too much. Her beauty is undiminished. And her behavior? Still gaily spirited? Mordecai, I have called you the eye of the king my keeper of the accounts, my all-knowing minister. So what have you to tell me? Nothing, sir. My vision does not penetrate into the harem or the queen's apartment. My beloved husband, how long I've waited. Adulterous. What? Have you gone mad? No, I have my senses or I'd kill you. You've shamed this palace with your corruption. Someone has filled your head with lies. Truth! Not lies. The soldiers of my replacements told me, men who fought and died, they had no reason to lie. Who shares your guilt, Vashti? Name them. Name them, I command you. There are no names. There is no guilt. Well, whoever it was, it's best I do not know. My pride would fall with their public punishment. Therefore, I condemn you in private. No. You will be forever dead to me. Oh, no, sir. I pray you, believe me. I would rather die a real death than lose you. Now send for your lovers, Harlot. Aha! 
Maybe we'd better hasten the wedding. <laughs> I've waited for him since I was a little girl. I can certainly wait a few more days. That will give her time to be sure that she loves me. Yes, it's for a lifetime. And she's only had ten years to decide. It's my great worry that she's never considered any other man. But how can love untested ever be sure? Oh, yes, yes, that's true. I haven't ever looked at anybody else. Maybe I should have done. <laughs> Simon! <laughs> oh! Simon. Oh, Mordecai. A uh, great soldier. The image of a David. The image of a good husband for your Esther, I hope. Mm. We didn't expect you so soon. I know. And I'm afraid the business of the king will keep me from your wedding. No. I will explain all later. So I made the journey today to bring you this gift for your house and Simon's. May I open it now? Simon, look, a mezuzah. Thank you, Uncle. Our thoughts will always be with you, Mordecai, while this mezuzah protects our home. Yes, and I hope that you'll protect him, Uncle, while he serves at that palace of wickedness. <laughs> Nothing can convince you that our king is not a man of evil. He's a good man at heart. Or at least, he was. Was? Has anything happened to him? Yes, something that has changed him. A disillusionment. A despair. That is why I cannot attend your wedding. It is imperative that I remain at the palace. There are those who would take advantage of the king's despair to further their own ends. If they succeed, it may mean the end of every Judean settlement in Persia. The king is an unhappy man. In all his majesty, I think he would actually envy you. Oh, no, 
Abu Judean seems to have no liking for my king's enjoyment. By your leave, sir, we have much work to do. I have here the figures you require on our military strength. You seem inspired after your long journey into the country. Indeed, I believe that even a king could benefit from such a journey. Here in Shushen, one is apt to forget that there are people without these frenzied aspirations. People that have their days of peace, serenity, and laughter, in spite of oppression and cruelty. Who are these people you speak of? Oh, some of your Hebrew aliens. Of Israel's religion, yes, but not alien. We are loyal subjects of the king. And now, with his permission, I shall withdraw to attend to his affairs. Tell me, Mordecai. Are we well prepared for an expedition against the Greeks? The home army of General Philadelphus has a total of 400,000 men on foot and 60,000 mounted fighters. Good. Now I will stem the ambitions of that young Macedonian upstart. What's his name? Alexander. That's it. I'll cut him off in his youth and annihilate his army. I dream of the day, sire, when there will be an end to war. I have been your counselor, and counselor to your father, Darius, and I have seen death and destruction. I thought, how splendid it would be if all this waste of wealth and manhood could be turned to building instead of destroying. The building of aqueducts, the irrigation of the desert, the creation of wealth and beauty. The Jew speaks of peace. Why do Jews always mouth of peace? Perhaps because war has forever driven us, dispersed us, made of us a people lost, seeking always for some haven of peace. Even at war, Persia has done well enough for you. Yes, she has been more than kind to a people who spurn her gods, who gather in their private worshiping of a god who shows no signs of existence. Stronger and wiser men than you have felt the power of my God. The Pharaoh of Egypt, Nicobanezer of Babylon, beware, Haman. Do not tempt him. Let him defend you. If I decide to cut your heart out. He will, Haman. He will. Don't you ever draw a blade in my council chamber. Or I will kill you myself. Mordecai, inscribe this and place it in the vaults as our secret strategy against Greece. And mind you, I shall hold you entirely responsible as its custodian. We shall strike against the Greek coastal fortress at Athos. It is the key. From Athos, we can cleave their lines from either side. We shall pour men and provisions into the fort from our province of Scythia, where the might of our forces will be based. That is the plan. Remember, it must be kept a secret at all costs.
Persia clearly state the punishment for a queen who shames the throne. There are two alternatives, death or banishment. Banish her. This very night, my lord. I shall return her to her tribe of Arius. And also as your first minister, I shall fulfill my duty by providing you with a new queen. That is not your lawful privilege, Haman. You question my knowledge of the law of the Achaemenids? No, but I question your purpose for distorting it. But it is written by the lawgivers of the great Cyrus. Any king of Media and Persia without a male heir They'll not be without a queen. You quote correctly, but not enough. It is also written, the king's men shall search the provinces, that they may gather together all the fairest young virgins unto Shush on the palace. And that maiden, which most pleases the king, shall become queen of him who rules. Does that make it plain that she is not to be of your special choosing? Quite so. Dear Mordecai, I thank you for saving me from error. A dead hand of the dynasty, trying to thrust on me some unknown female. I can only execute the provisions of the law, sire. So by your leave. Mighty power is a burden. I know but one way to lighten it. What is your way? By lessening the burdens of others, one removes his own. The joy you would travel afield to seek could thus be found in yourself. And in time, perhaps, sir, uh, you will find. some of your Syrian wine? There is another matter even more important. It has to do with Queen Vashti. be in any hurry to inspect his treasury at Persepolis. Sometimes I feel you overdo your plundering there. I could say the same about the abundance of army secrets you sell to the Greeks. But then I think how my store of gold grows in Corinth. And I attempt to be cheerful. There is no prospect but danger so long as we let the king continue to live. There are more discreet places than Shushan. For what you have in mind. In time, you will find such a place. And I shall rule Persia as the ally of Alexander. But until then, we're playing this game on the edge of a precipice. Not at all. Not at all. In the event any guile comes to the king's attention, I have found the perfect scapegoat. Who? Mordecai and his whole colony of Judeans in Persia.
the war secret which the king entrusted to Mordecai's safekeeping, his plan for a surprise attack on the Greeks. I copied it from memory in Greek and added in Hebrew an appropriately traitorous message. My brilliant Haman. <laughs> You'll keep these tablets in your possession until suspicion threatens us. Then I'll tell you how to turn them to our use. My master summons me. Come here, my dear. Behold, the future queen of Persia. You make sport of me. A bride of the king must be a maiden. I never heard of one who has been a concubine. But you will, Phaedrathes. You will. This will be history. For if the perfume of a rose is pleasing, Nobody's going to ask who crushed the petals. Your only love is danger, Haven, and you caught it with the passion of a madman. <laughs> My timid general, here is the royal command for you. Carry out the law of the gathering of the virgin. You need not be too demanding of beauty or perfection, because the one who will wear the diadem is already as good as crowned. my golden sword from the house. They won't defy a symbol of the king.
Hey, Judean tried to murder me. Find him. Bring him to me alive. man, woman, and child, and let it be done to all the Hebrew settlements. that seem a bit too worldly for maidens. There are a few prime maidens here who might attract the fancy of our monarch. He isn't quite himself these days. And it is my duty to decide what is best for him. Naturally, Prince Haman. So, you will remove the one who plays with the water. That one, with the fair skin of Circassia. And the one who sits in the corner. Your guards may have them. <laughs> and after that, you can send them to the soldiers at the garrison. It is dangerous, Prince Haman. Hedgei the eunuch is a sharp guardian. Yes, but you must have some guards whose lives you would not mind risking. Yes. I have three new recruits, not worth their salt. Ha! Strangers to the palace, all the better. Assign them, dangle the reward of women, and disclaim them as lustful beasts, if they're God. Only the ten most beautiful will be sent to the king for the final choosing. So tomorrow, I will judge you. some way to stop it. But first, Esther, Simon believes that your influence with the king will free her. No, he has become indifferent to everything but his own bitterness. Haman, the chief minister, that prince of festering corruption, is now to all intents and purposes our ruler. Then, I must carry the word to Simon that there is no hope. There's always hope. Give me time. Time to seek God's counsel. Where is Simon hiding? in the ancient ruins of the City of the Dead. Go to him. Tell him I shall come to him. That's the way. mightiest of us all. Twirl him on your shoulders and flatten him. That'll teach him not to withhold his strength when he vies with the king. <coughs> the old days, they were the best. Those wild, hard days. The scorching deserts, the raging storms at sea. We conquered the enemies of Persia. My brave immortal. A king with the earth for his footstool. And yet his only happiness is here with us. Oh! 
king were only such a man. He's not only brave, but pleasing to the eye. You'll surely die if you try to escape. There'll be soldiers behind you. Uncle Mordecai. Where's Simon? Where is he? Take me to him. Please, please take me to him. I can't, Esther. He fought the king's general. Now they hunt him like an animal. At the village, they looted and scourged. They did likewise to every Judean settlement in El Paso. They hung Emmanuel the blacksmith. They drove the women and children into the wilderness. Our people are now scattered to the wind. Oh, forgive me. I was only thinking of myself, but I'm nothing. Ah, oh, but you are something, Esther. You are something indeed that Jehovah may have selected as a means for saving our people. It is a wondrous thing how gentleness can break the swords of evil. So let it be your gentleness, Esther. Your beauty of face and soul. Let it sway, Osiris, to stamp out the wickedness that springs from this palace. You're asking me to strive for his favor? Yes, forgetting so. Forgetting your own small dreams. Forgetting all this but the deliverance of our people. I want the life they took away from me. I want Simon. Simon is a soldier. He turns aside from love when there is war. This is your war, Esther. A softer war fought with gentler weapons, but nonetheless hazardous, for there are dangers in the venture. You too would be a soldier. Perhaps Simon would see that with a soldier's pride. He would despise me. Then his love would not be worthy. If he placed it about the fate of so many others. But I love him, Uncle. Oh, how can you ask me to leave him forever? <laughs> Yourself. But I must warn you. Do not make known your people or your kindred. Never forget that we are in the camp of many enemies. Oh, oh Lord God of Israel, guide me. Guide me. white gown. Such simplicity. Was it your choice? Yes. Indeed. One might think you have no desire to win a queen's crown. A most becoming modesty. It pleases me. An unassuming virtue that needs rewarding. Fetch me the cloak of gold. You may rest, my little dove. Grateful 
but I don't wish to be so favored. I will accept it. Oh, yes, yes, give it to her. Speak only when you're spoken to. Take care, you. I have mighty friends. In the brothels of the Street of the Soldiers, no doubt. Here, my child, I ask you to wear it. Please. tongue endangers me. Forgive me, Master. But I fear the attractions of the one with the golden cape. More than all the others. She'll not be in the way. If you will do as I bid you. Yes. The maidens must pass through the harem's antechamber tonight to be presented at the throne. There is a small door of the slaves in there. Draw the bolt. How? It's like a prison here. Uh, it is the hour of rest. Even Hage, I will go to his quarters. Go. Go now. Disco, you see the maid with the golden cape? Remember. Remember well the one with the cape of gold. What a squandering of beauty. The fairest from all the provinces, and now they will be sent home to milk goats. Home? Where else? You are children of the kingdom, not captive concubines. So it becomes merely a matter of paying obeisance. Go, my sweet, and farewell. You may go. 
Wait. That face of light, I remember. The man who fought the car. You can't be the king. I sometimes wish I weren't. What do you call? Esther. And you had been crying. I remember. Tell me about it. Your soldiers had just taken me from the man I was about to marry. Well, there is the law. And I, too, am its servant. Even though I dislike it at times. You were hoping that I would let you go, were you not? No, no. Not if this is... Your destiny? Well, it seems we are both bound. I by the commandments of my grandfather and you by some faith. I was determined to flaunt the sacred law of life, declaring every aspirant unfit. But now, I honestly cannot, Esther, and be a good king. I can't deny that in my eyes, you have fulfilled the decree of Cyrus. <laughs> I choose you, Esther, but I do not command you. I ask you to remain here for a while. Let time be the king. Let it command your heart to go or to stay. Attend her, Hagi, as if she already wore the crown. My queen to be. My lord has chosen? A girl named Esther. just left the king, and he smiles again, often and readily. Indeed, each passing day seemed another proof that you were a godsend to that troubled man. But I worry about your safety, Esther. The king is not a patient man. He is attracted not only by your beauty, but by your integrity and sense of justice, the qualities that still bind you to Simon. Yet I fear that same conscience of yours may, in time, destroy his patience and perhaps turn him against you. I'm in no danger, Uncle Mordecai. So far, he's shown nothing but kindness to me. You do not know him as I do. His violence can be great. You see him as a man among men. You do not see him as I do, through a woman's eyes. Oh, surely such a quick defense could only spring from affection. I can't deny that I am attracted to him by some power that I don't understand. I've tried to believe that it's simply power of admiration. But then, do you think that it was only admiration that I felt for Simon all these years? Just the hero worship of a child. He said once that my love for him had never been tested by any other man. Please go to him, Uncle Mordecai. Take him whatever he needs. I go now, dearest. Simon! Simon! Simon!
see that you are kept supplied until the men of Clayton has abandoned the hunt. The hunt will never end. Why do you say that? Because I shan't rest until I take Esther out of bondage. She is not enslaved. The king himself is our protector. Then he prepares her to be his concubine. His queen. Hear me, Simon. I've spoken with Esther, and I've seen what I believe to be the dawning of a sincere affection in her for the king. An affection which... I don't deny I urged, because I could foresee in it the answer that may lead to the salvation of our people, not alone now, but for the ages to come. So you would sacrifice her like a lamb upon the altar, for posterity. What if the king learns of this? What then would be her punishment? No, no. You cannot do this. I won't let you do it. No, oh, please, take them away. Please leave me alone. Wait, I'm... I'm sorry. You need not be. I'm only slave. I'm a slave, too. I don't mean to be unkind, but... It's just that I, I'm... I'm troubled by this life. And by memories of another life. Yes, I am. How dare you come into my room? Ah, what a rude greeting for the chief minister. I am here officially, my dear, to bring the king's word that he will visit you at the tenth hour. But, uh, there is still time for us to know one another. You must be mad. This can destroy you. And a serious also, if you force me to tell him that you often invite me to share your lonely evening hours. You're such a liar, he'd never believe you. <laughs> You're no match for me in this game, Esther. Mine is a life of hazard, so please, do not aggravate me. Our king is happy with his faith in you. Let us keep him so. Well, then get out. Get out of here, I'll call the guards. You won't. Because I would tell Osiris that it was his loyal Haman who summoned the no, we must be reasonable, my dear. We must face the fact that we require each other, you and I. You would. You would plunge us all into destruction. Not the king, if I can help it. But you, Haman, I'll find a way to destroy you. <laughs> and I, you. Honey, now that he has a new favorite. Follow the upper corridor. It'll lead you direct to his audience room. The king has urgent dispatches for me to deliver to the province of Galen. Have a chariot at my disposal in case I'm charged with haste. One. Your gentleness will conquer him.
I fear I could never imitate a lover. My hand was fastened with a sword and not the strings of a lyre. And these feet were not made to prance to music. They're uncommonly large, don't you think? <laughs> I used to think that they'd be cloven, like the hooves of Satan. There are those who still think I'm akin to the devil. I trampled hard on some who dared to defy the empire. Yes, you have. And on many innocent people, too, because of the authority that you give to Haman. Oh, I've tightened the reins on him, thanks to your constant mentioning of his wrongdoing. But I sometimes wonder, Esther, what are you? My mentor? The keeper of my good behavior? Or a woman who might someday return the warmth I have for her? Oh, but there is much warmth in my feeling for you as a man. Then at least I've gained the outer rampart. So you guard the inner citadel with more tenacity than the Greeks. The awe of a village girl for a king is not easily cast aside. Don't think of me as a king in a palace, but as a man who loves you. Who loves you. When I was first taken from my village, I hated you with all my heart. But now that I've seen you as you really are, I find the hatred leaving me. Different feelings taking its place. Feelings that... Well, that, that could be love. Carriers are here from Nubia and Tangis with gifts. I'll be back. Girls from the Far East. Treasures from Nubia. magic and there's a chariot. It can take us to Judah if you like. Simon, you must go. You're in great danger here. You're in danger too and you invite it standing alone against our enemies. Simon, I have to do this. The king is no longer our enemy. You love him. I don't know. I don't know. Esther. Oh, Simon, please save yourself. He shan't have you. I'll kill him. Thief 
entered the palace by using the sword of the golden rooster. I think he stole it from one of my governors, and now he's made good his escape. I will double the guard for your protection, Esther. But I'd rather take care of you myself. How long must I wait? Esther. Queen Esther. The title of queen is much less important to me than wife of Aziris. Then obey Aziris and wear a crown. And whatever else you desire will be yours. Even to have the kingdom. But I only want the kingdom of your heart. With its love and its mercy. You already possess that, Esther. You rule my heart. And my life.
gathered you here to pay homage to Esther, my queen. She has given me a new vision of my Persia, which I never before looked upon with eyes of justice. Now I see it. Therefore, taxes will be determined according to conditions of scarcity or abundance, and no longer by fixed levies. General Quadrathes will no longer judge without trial the villages of the provinces. Mordecai, the financing of the kingdom will not suffer from these new laws of taxation, for I intend to journey to the treasury of Persepolis and draw from its great surplus. That is all. My noblemen and counselors, I have spoken, and it is the law. I do not forbid discussion, however. Sire, I have just recalled a long neglected law of King Cyrus, which would save you the necessity of a trip to Persepolis. I quote precisely. And so be it that any subject of Media and Persia who does not bow down to our god Mithras shall be put to death and his goods taken by the king. Now, my lord, there is within the confines of Persia a people called Judeans who defiantly worship an alien god. The law is clear. They must be annihilated. And by your command, sire, I can destroy these people and enrich you by 10,000 talents of silver. No, no, no. This law is of a cruel age. Long before our king of justice sat upon the throne. Deny it, sire. Cast it out. I beg you. <laughs> Listen not to him, my lord. I pray you, for he is one of the Judeans. Aziris, Aziris. The law, the law. It is written, for any woman, even unto the queen, who interrupts royal counsel, there is but one decree, and that is death. Complete the text, except for her to whom the king holds out the golden scepter. I dare to speak, Aziris, because once you gave me a kingdom called the Kingdom of the Heart. Its only power is love. And today, that love cries out to you against these old injustices and against that man who perpetrates them. I see you now the greatest of all kings. But I've also seen you simply as a brave man defending the weak. And I know that you now have the wisdom to be able to cast out oppression and intolerance wherever you find it. The Judeans may worship as they desire. There will be a new code. The code of Assyrus. And perhaps it will not be necessary for you to know it too well, Prince Haman. But there's a governor's post in the Syrian desert that requires no such astute knowledge. Retiring me to a sandhill in Syria. By all the gods. I'll make him sorry for taking counsel from this new queen. I remind you again that his assassination has been too long delayed. And I still remind you that it cannot be done in Shushan. 
But if he goes to Persepolis, as he so announced, that may be delayed too by, by a very important event. The slaughter of the Judeans and the hanging of Mordecai. The forged tablet you gave me? When, Haman? The moment will be determined by the will of the gods. We shall cast the lots. I never joined battle without the casting of Purr. The red sign of blood falls in the month of Ada. And that is now. Now indeed. It shall be tonight. And this is how it shall be done. in Hebrew to a Judean in Greek. Lies, all lies, my king. I am your loyal, your faithful servant. He has fabricated all of this. How could I? I cannot write in Hebrew or Greek. But it is well known that Mordecai has written all royal messages to Judah, as well as your negotiations with the Greeks. These scribes have verified the treason on that tablet. And these soldiers, will testify that the evidence is the same which they saw hidden in the temple of the Hebrews. Any who would defile the Ark of the Temple swears falsely. But I declared against violating the worship of the Judeans. Yes, sire. We confess to that. But I would not wish to live and see this glorious empire devoured by Alexander the Greek. Defend yourself, Mordecai. I have no guilt to defend, sire. I swear my innocence on the holy word of God. And on what God's word do you swear? My God. And he will sustain me. Our God will destroy you. Ours, sire. For we are Persians. And before I brought this evidence to you, I cast purr for guidance knowing that my king is as faithful as I to our own temples. I am. And perhaps I've been too trustful of Mordecai and the strange believers in our midst. Much too trustful, sire. Even in your choice of a new queen. Yes. Yes, I realize I provoke my king's wrath. I must. In the name of loyalty. For he is unaware that his queen and Mordecai have been meeting in secret. Remember, she risked death to defend his Judeans. No, no, Esther. Esther. Not Queen Esther. The intimacy of conspirators. What do you know, Esther, of Mordecai's treason? The only treason here is Eris' Haman's. 
He's the one that should be on trial, but under laws far above this palace. Words, words, words. Have Mordecai taken to prison. If no defense is presented, hang him and his people put to the sword unless they renounce their leaders and their Dearest, faith. listen to me. This judgment will be upon your soul. You speak of deceit. You deceived me with your gift of the kingdom of mercy. You've given it to Haman and he's filled it with wickedness. Do you realize, Esther, that you could be put to death for speaking out in this chamber? Yes. And I don't ask you to hold out your scepter to me because I shall die anyway. I am a Jew. Esther. Esther, renounce your faith. And live. I speak for myself, and for my uncle Mordecai, and for all my people. We'll still be keeping our faith when Shushan is a mound of desert sand, and your gods are forgotten. But I can't hate you for this decision, Aziris, because I know that again you were influenced by Haman. Why is he so anxious for you not to go to Persepolis that he brings you this false evidence the very night before you're leaving? Is he afraid of what you might see at the treasury? Oh, please, Aziris, for the sake of my love for you, don't condemn us until you've made the journey. I do not believe your love. However, there is something in what you say. I stay the execution of Mordecai and the Jews until I return from Persepolis. He must never reach Persepolis. <laughs> you have been very patient, Pleitrandi. I restrain you no longer, and I offer a thousand talents of gold for his head.
surprise the greatest heroes to find he has enemies? Help me among them, you king of thieves. Simon, captain of the Golden Sword, you've joined my enemies? No, I declare my own war against you. I refuse to fight the man who saved my life in battle. Why, you're crazy, perhaps. Would you not see if you were I, the king had used his power to steal the girl you were about to marry? <laughs> Now hold, you fool. Esther was your betrothed. And now she'll be your widow. <laughs> you risk your life when she can still be yours. She never loved me, only the cause she served. That is not true. On a certain night, I stole into her room and stood with drawn sword beside a doorway you would enter. She chose your life against mine and gave the alarm. You were the one she put to flight? Her love was yours and is. Glad oh. oh. Rathney, the one who tried to assassinate you, I settled an old account with him. Oh. 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 Forgive me. Help me. Stop the pain. That I will do. That or more pain unless you speak the whole truth. I speak. I speak truly. Haman was the genius of all our crimes against you. Your intended murder, the thieving of Persepolis, the selling of your strategy to the Greeks. He forged the false evidence against Mordecai, and offered a price for your own royal head. I'll give you peace, Clyde Rothies. <coughs> and I condemned Esther into Haman's hands and Mordecai and all their people. Condemned? They're doomed. Unless... Here. Take this, my seal of empire. While I gather my forces here, you ride into Shushan. Find a way into the city and bring this seal to my master of arms. Tell him I said to arm all the Judeans. Sabbath of the Judeans. They gather in their temple. Osman, see that they never leave it. Gurkha, you will use your horsemen to put down any resistance in the city. My good Schumer, I give you the pleasure of escorting their leader Mordecai to the gallows. Off with you. Jiska. The Queen. Yes, Decide that our Prince Haman will be the most popular ruler in the history of Persia. <laughs> Don't worry, my stupid one. The gates are guarded. No one can leave the city or enter it. <laughs>
<laughs> I served with you in the Egyptian campaign. I'm a blacksmith now. Tobiah, I'm here on the king's orders to arm our people. Are there any more of the old company in Shushan? Enough for corps of defense, my captain. Gather them together and wait in the marketplace. And there are others here in Shushan, not soldiers, but they can swing a club or an axe. Then we'll arm them too, Tobiah. Seek them out and send them to the temple. Good. David called. In David's words, I affirm my love for thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. my weight in gold, they'll reject their faith by remaining away from their temple. I wouldn't wager a copper might against our new king's wisdom. Simon is waiting for us. Our day at last. They congregate like animals in the slaughter pen. Simplifies my work. Chariot.
Hang him. Hang him high. shall neither slumber nor sleep. of our people must live in memory. Haman cast Pur to decide our doom, so let it be called Purim. And let it be remembered with holidays of gladness, like those we knew sometimes at the village. So it shall be, my Lion of Israel. alive must go on living. Simon wouldn't have your sorrow, nor would he have you bring sorrow to the king. I know that although Cyrus gave you a choice of remaining here, it was his secret wish that you would return to him. When you didn't, he went away to the wars, because he cared not whether he lived or died. Have you heard anything from the battle? Yes. Word of a Persian defeat by the Greeks, and to him, Defeat is a word worse than death. It was never for his victories that I loved him. 